Hailing from After Buzz TV, it's Ringside Pop. You know it don't stop. With clicks to the business of everything that's high. Call it Ringside Pop. You know it don't stop. With the flicks to the business of everything that's high. Welcome to Ringside Pop with Kia Stevens, Marty Elias, and Dan. Howdy, howdy, howdy. It's time to get rowdy right here on Ringside Pop. I am your host, Dale Rutledge, and we have got a very special episode for you today. We're calling it The Adventures of PJ Black. That is because we just might have PJ Black. But first, before we get to the man of honor, let's get to my co host. We have the lovely, as always, Kia Stevens. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How's your week been? It was good. It was yeah. awesome. Yes. Did some wrestling. Did some binge watching. It was like... Oh, what are you watching? Everything in one. I'm re-watching Grey's Anatomy for some reason. What? Oh, my God. It's the God. weirdest thing. <laughs> it was like a... on Lifetime, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to rewatch that. <laughs> you know what I need? <laughs> a lot of this. <laughs> I don't think I made it through the first time, so good on you. Uh, also in studio, as always, we've got Marty Elias. How's it going over there, Marty? All right. How are you? Doing pretty good. Good yeah. to see you. How's your week been? Uh, it was great. You know, a lot of networking and working with some... Uh, clothing line out in New York. Oh, yeah. really? So, yeah. Are you getting your own kiss uh, uh, wardrobe? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, a little bit, no. Uh, yeah, putting some stuff together with, with a brand, uh, and I'll name a future legend, out of uh, New York, and uh, d- doing some stuff like that, and then nice. actually confirmed uh, uh, working with Chris Jericho on October 24th. I've uh, heard of him. The, f- yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey, Chris, by the way, man, take care. Uh, dude, you're there in... Uh, with Hurricane Irma, do please be safe. Oh, geez. Yeah, everyone down there. We got a lot of people down there in yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Wrestling has a lot of people in Florida. Oh, my please gosh. Be safe. Yeah, and then uh, with Chris, you know, texting with him and stuff, he's actually staying there. So he, he's in Tampa right now. So him and his family. So, uh, But, yeah, October 24th, we're working the Loudwire uh, Award Show. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be rocking. So if you're a metal guy or a metal girl, there you go. All right, now. Yeah. Wait, so <laughs> your your line is called Future Legend? No, uh, I'm actually working with a company called Future Legend. Oh, I'm going to tell Charlie and Melissa. She said, I'm like, girl, somebody didn't steal your name. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exclusive. I'm sure there's many Future Legends. I'm just starting trouble. Like when you're future a kid, Legend you're like, apparel. Ooh, someone's so hitchy, you're going to hit them back. <laughs> you know what I heard? <laughs> um, and our special guest today is the former Lucha Underground Trios champion, FCW heavyweight champion, GFW, King of the Mountain, and multi-time WWE tag team champion, South Africa's own daredevil, PJ Black. What's up, guys? How's it going? Welcome to the show. Hey, Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you for here, having buddy. me. Thanks for having me, Marty. No problem. So let's, let's start off first with your entry. I think that a lot of people are curious what's going on with you. For, first of all, what happened? Let's talk about that. Okay, I jumped this building. And it's <laughs> <laughs> like that you start so casual. So I'm jumping a building. Obviously, it's a Tuesday. Yeah, it was. I was actually on my way to the airport to fly back to the U.S. after the South, Af- uh, South African tour. Okay. And I was like, let me get one more in. I got like five or six in in the week. Oh and I was gosh. like, let me get one more in. And uh, yeah, that's when it happened. Uh, I mean, people think the parachute didn't open. The parachute opened fine. The problem is with jumping a solid object like a like a building. When the parachute opens, it has it has to open perfect so you fly away from the building so I, I guess it opened my body position must have been off so it opened like slightly to the left or right uh, I don't even remember and there was a satellite dish right there and I hit it I oh, grabbed my brakes and I flipped myself around I kicked off the wall that's why I broke my leg uh, and I tore a piece of my finger off ooh, they, I saw that can you see that, that but yeah, I saw that they, they managed to save it they sewed it back on and uh, what did you hold on to it how did it what happened yeah I just kept it in my hands oh in the hospital. my god <laughs> Hardcore. You are daredevil. So yeah. wait, so this was this was in where where in South Africa in, was this? In South Africa, in Johannesburg. It was in a Johannesburg. Yeah. Okay. Have, you, have you have you guys ever seen that movie Chappie? Oh yeah, yeah, yes. I love yes. Chappie. That was the building I jumped. Oh wow, <laughs> the this building. Yep, yep. Oh nice. Wow. Yep. So you'd already done four or five that week though. Yeah, possibly more. I've done quite a few. <laughs> That's wow. crazy. Yeah. But you wanted to get one more in. One more in one on more. my way to the airport, and then. Yeah. Wow. Now, had anything like that <laughs> happened to you before while doing that? Uh, about a year ago, same place. I broke both my legs. <laughs> oh, my God. But oh before that, gosh. before that, my 35-year career, I started um, contact sports when I was seven years old. I've okay. never been injured. 
Wow. So the last two years have been rough. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe my bones are getting brittle or something. I don't know. Maybe just avoid that building. Maybe. <laughs> I think the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> one more build. I blame wrestling fans. <laughs> yeah. They're always chanting, yeah. one more time, one more time. Yeah. One more match. See what you guys did to your boy? That's the soundtrack yeah. he was listening Anyone to. Knew. <laughs> do you listen to music or anything? Or what do you, you just like be out there with you and, and the obstacle? It depends. Um, <laughs> Jumping is kind of like a, a forced meditation, if you will, because okay. like you know, you're standing on on top and you're looking down. And you're like you don't you don't think about like the bills you have to pay. You don't think about what you have to do tomorrow. I don't, wasn't thinking about my flight I had to catch. I wasn't thinking about anything. You're like completely in the moment, like in that zone. It's like it's like it forces you to be in that state, yeah. which which that's that's what I like. You know, like I, I'm scared when I stand there. I'm scared. I promise you, I'm I'm super scared. But once I land, it's like it's like the most amazing feeling when you've conquered that fear. Right. And you learn something every time I learn something about myself, about life, about being safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me ask you this. What did you learn about hitting the building? <laughs> oh, man. Um, not to do tricks off a building. <laughs> 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 it was so weird. I hit the building, too, and I had so much. Um, I'll show you guys a picture of the building, too. So, like, it was, uh, it was window, stone, window, stone. Like, every floor was different. Oh, I like, if I had gone through a window, I would have not oh. be here right now so oh I was God. very lucky to hit that satellite dish in a way wow. um, yeah but I, but I managed to fly down I landed exactly where I wanted to land I knew my leg was broken so I kind of landed on one leg and I just kind of rolled and I was like yep you guys better take me to the hospital now oh my god <laughs> and, and the, here's my finger right. <laughs> yeah, right. somebody reschedule my flight yeah. <laughs> it was that it was uh, like the next day the pain was pretty bad yeah they actually injected me with morphine into my spine i didn't even know that was a thing oh my, oh god. my god i mean that felt good but like <laughs> once that wore off <laughs> yeah. it was so painful oh my god so did you break your actual what what did you actually break i broke all the bones in my ankle all, tore all the ligaments uh they they basically reconstructed the whole thing i have two titanium plates they put in so the heel bone is like this and your foot is like this and there's a a ligament that goes through that holds everything together it's called a deltoid ligament and that's like the big one and that she said it snapped like a few weeks ago. She's like, how, how do you even, like, how are you even walking? Oh <laughs> so I guess it must have been weakened from the other jumps, and then this one just, like, kind of, like, shattered all the other bones. Oh, my God. Did wrestling have anything to do with that? I think so. She also, the doctor told me, she's like, oh, you know you have arthritis, right? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> I, I blame wrestling for that. Yeah. That, that probably yeah. is yeah. Yeah. wrestling blamable. But, I mean, I, if I could go back, I wouldn't change a thing. Well, yeah. did, did they say what your foot is going to be able to do after it heals? I mean, it's never going to be 100%. We know that. But, I mean, I'm going to, obviously, I'm going to try to, to be as good as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, I don't skip, like, rehab days. I go every single day. I do rehabilitation two, three times a week. I do the cryo chamber. I started doing the hyperbaric, the oxygen chamber. The what is, that helps a lot, actually. Really? What is that, too? Electrotherapy, uh, stem cell therapy. I'm doing a little documentary right now. I'm recording all this, all this stuff that I'm going through. Huh. And I'm hopefully making like a, a, a Rocky like comeback. Video yeah, yeah. Like, the these stuff. are the steps that you take to get back to the place. Yeah, right. yeah. it's amazing. Like the technology right now, like stem cells a few years ago, it wasn't um, even a thing in the US. Like all the NFL, all the quarterbacks would fly to, to, uh, to Europe to get it done. And finally, like, you know, like LA, everything's a gray area here. It's like <laughs> technically still not legal here, right. but like yeah. the doctors do it anyway. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So it's like marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. That's actually helped a lot, too. Like oh, yeah. The, the, the CBD stuff for my uh -huh. pain, that's helped a lot. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff on TV about it, just different yeah, things. It's amazing. Like, I've started doing some research about it, too, because I never used to believe in it, but, like, it's helped me so much. It's unreal. You know, that's so cool to hear because the fact that, uh, you know, I, I know that this country, and, and you know, I w got, you know, drug into it, too, you know, with the opioids and everything else that happens, you know, prescription pills things of that nature, but then when there's an alternative, you know, and it works, you know, it, yep. it's something, you know, to hear like somebody you, you know, like you say that because, you know, more times than not, you know, with wrestling and things of that nature, you know, you, you have a tendency to kind of go that other way, but then if there's something new and conventional, then totally, totally. it and works. Uh, and uh, I actually saw some of the NFL guys actually funding the study themselves. They think that the CBD helps for concussions. Oh, interesting. So like a lot of NFL guys would take the, the capsules before training and, and, and big games. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like they're still doing research, but obviously it's looking pretty good right now. And it's something I'm going to definitely try out. You know, like, I mean, CBD doesn't make you high or anything. But right. No, it comes from the male plant. It yeah, has that yeah. THC. Something, I'm, yes. something like that you probably know better than me. <laughs> I have topical stuff to CBD. Get my CBD out. Yeah. And rub the male on me. 
<laughs> well, a lot of times that stuff isn't like it's it's illegal because it's worse for you. It's illegal because they haven't figured out how to make money off of it yet. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Very, so it's very not, true. Yes. You know. Well, as soon as all those studies came out, uh, the big pharma companies, the the government actually made it a Schedule One drug. Oh, interesting. Just just CBD, by the way, mm. you know, which is like I was like, ah, well, okay, that's because it wanna... really doesn't make it doesn't give you. The, the, it's not like THC. It doesn't make you high. Make you high at all. Be, I know, but it, th they want to make money off it, so they mm. want to regulate it. And stuff. <clears throat> Why wouldn't they want to make money off yeah. it like they do everything else? Yeah. Sounds about right. So is what's the craziest thing that you've done then? Um, mm, that's a tough question. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I've done so many crazy <laughs> things. It also depends, because like, some of the stuff I do is pretty normal to me, and other people go like, what? You, you're freaking nuts. <laughs> and, and the other way around, you know? So it, it really depends. It's a... I guess that question is relative in so many ways. <laughs> is there is there something that's like on your list to do that you're like I don't I don't know if I can do it or I don't know you know I want to get to that point where I'm brave enough to dot dot dot. Yeah, I mean there's 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 so much advancements in in um, in the sport of wingsuit base jumping right now. Oh yeah, that's something mm -hmm. that I'm looking forward to. I'm, I'm I don't know if you guys can remember like in '98 '99 uh, the, the the X Games the main event was always the sky surfing. I feel like wingsuiting five years from now will be the biggest sport on the planet. Like, um, like the, because they, they started doing like races, like the wingsuit races. I've seen that on YouTube. Yeah. It's so, it's so like, dope. It's, it's basically like Formula One racing, but like in a 3D space. But yeah, with like no protection except for a helmet. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, I feel like that's going to be a big sport. So that's what I'm kind of training for. So that's what I, I really want to do. Interesting. You know, my whole family is like, you're going to stop jumping now, right? And I'm like, yeah. So that's a big sport right now. It, it, it is pretty big right now, but like the it's a pretty new sport. I think five years from now, it'll be really big. Who's your biggest competitor in that sport? Oh, there's so many. Uh, Sam Hardy, this, this British guy, uh, Jeb Corliss. That's probably the most famous base jumper that people know. He's the GoPro athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there's so many of them. I mean, I still have a way to go to like, get to that level. but uh, So you've done it already, though? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay. If you go on my Instagram, PJ450, there's a bunch of me of my uh, okay. wingsuit flights and base jumps and all kinds of stuff on there. It looks cool. There's nothing closer to being like a superhero, I feel, than, than that. Exactly. If you ask any kid, like, hey, if you can have any superpower in the world, what would it be? Like 90%. 90% right? would say flying. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what it feels like. That's the most amazing feeling. And it gets better every time. The other ones are just like future peeping Toms who want to be invisible. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how the 5%. <laughs> You know, when you're doing this stuff, what's the rush? You know, because I know, you know, being in front of a crowd and everything, it's such a great rush and doing other stuff. But when you're actually in the air flying, I mean, what's that rush? The adrenaline. You know, like when I started doing it, it used to be all about the adrenaline. Like now it's more like a meditation for me. Like it, it really like calms me down in a weird way. I know it sounds weird, but like it's... It's like, like I said, it's like a forced meditation. Like I don't think of anything. For like, when you jump out of a plane, um, a normal skydive usually lasts 60 seconds. In a wingsuit, you can get three or four minutes. Wow. And it's like just three or four minutes flying through the sky with your friends. It's like, it's, it's amazing. And you see birds all the time. And I fly through clouds. And it's, a, it's a, I don't even know how to, I don't have words to explain it. It's like, it's, it, I mean, it's still a rush when I land. I always shake. But like when I'm up there, it's like, it's just like, it's tranquil. It's like, you know, like you don't, you hear the wind, but you don't think of anything. It's just, it's pretty cool. <laughs> what was your first jump? What was my first jump? Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I really just want to get that Instagram shot, like of me flying through the sky. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all I wanted. And then I did the one jump and I was hooked. I was like, I was, wow, this is what I want to do. And then I thought about nice. the, the Daredevil, Daredevil character at that time. And I actually filmed a bunch of stuff like you know like snowboarding i told myself how to do a backflip on a motorcycle like a motocross bike i did some uh i got some surfing shots some base jumping wingsuiting skydiving all those extreme sports and that's how the daredevil character came around and I, I see i actually uh showed vince this clip and uh <laughs> after two two or three minutes of me like almost killing myself he looked at me and he's like hmm i didn't know you can juggle <laughs> there, was a, there was a clip of me like juggling these fireballs, and that's that, that's what stood out to me. Yeah. 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 We got a juggler. <laughs> Suddenly, you have a juggler yeah. giving right. instead yeah. of the uh, juggler. It's like it was fireballs, but like, yeah. <laughs> I'd read something about a fireball mishap in a match or something a long time ago. Is that is that true or is yes, that? Yes, yes. Um, Wow, I actually found that clip the other day. I'll post it oh, on, okay. on my social media today, yeah, like tomorrow, to or this week. Uh, yeah, the guy. I don't know if you guys know how the fireballs work that the magicians use. Yeah, that's just it's just it's just like a 
flash paper. Yeah. But you have to still light it. Oh, okay. So we had the spot in the match where the guy was going to throw it at me, but he couldn't light it. He couldn't light it. <laughs> so I was just going to go and give him another shot, you know, so he had more time to sell between the, the spot. And I guess as I grabbed him, he, he got it. And then the, the, the fireball got me. Like, it burned me pretty bad. You, it's like the beard and the hair, you can, you can smell it. But oh, yeah. I, I didn't have any, like, bad skin burns, luckily. Oh, that's good. That's what they're there for, I guess. Yeah, 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 the yeah, eyebrow right. list for a couple weeks. But. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. Was this before Hogan and Warrior tried it? What year was that? I think Can't that remember. was like 99, Oh, yeah, it was, way after, it was way after that. I think this was 2003, 4. Because you started pretty young, though, in, in wrestling. Though, yeah. Right? 15, 16, I had my first match, but I started refereeing matches when I was like 11. Oh, my gosh. Holy wow. smokes. Yeah. I would love to see an 11-year-old yeah, referee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Watch out, Marty. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was so scared. I was even more scared for that than I was for my actual first match. Oh, yeah? Because like, it was like on the spot. Like, uh, like My dad was like, get in there right now. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know anything. He goes, you can count to three, right? He was like, just go. Just go. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh. Yeah. It's Take not that easy. It's, and that's it's, exactly how promoters... Still to this day, take it. Oh, that kid can count to three. We don't need to bring in Marty. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. No, that was that. my introduction to the business, too. Amen. Like. That sounds about right, though. I mean, trial yeah. by fire, man. Just throw you in the deep end, right? Right, right. That's how my dad learned, told me how to swim, too. He just threw me into the pool. He's like, there you go. So, like, sort it out. Yep. True story. Well, that's how I learned to swim. <laughs> and and he, he trained you to wrestle, or how, who trained you? My dad trained me, a couple of other guys. So my dad did a school, but there was laws in, in South Africa at the time. You, need, you needed to be 18 to train or do a professional sport. I see, okay. Oh, God, so I like, thought he was, you need to be white. I was, <laughs> 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 I was a <laughs> Jesus. So I was like 15 when I started training, so I wrestled. I had a mask with like this wig, this long hair, and I had this full body suit on so no one would know it was me. Oh, uh, I see, so, yeah. You know, like wrestling full-time on weekends, I'd wrestle like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday, I'd get to school. None of my homework was done. I had all these bruises everywhere and like other people's makeup and tan all over me. <laughs> you know, but I couldn't tell I couldn't tell any of the other kids. <laughs> well <laughs> what what lie do you come up with at that point? <laughs> oh man, I, I, I forgot half the lies I came up with. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Uh, who was your first match and uh, who went over? It was my dad. It was a tradition in South Africa. My dad was like the, the fifth Finley of South Africa. Like everyone uh -huh. everyone's first match was against him. If you speak to Adam Rose, if you speak to any of the South Africans that you know or will meet in the future, yeah. their first match was always against him. He was like, he was legit like a, a hooker. Like a, you get the shooter and you get, then you get the hooker. Uh, for the wrestling fans who know the terms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Not a hooker that you might otherwise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember too, uh, the, the stadium that it happened in was the Westridge Tennis Stadium in Durban. And when WWE travels there, they still go to that building. It's a piece of shit, the building. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, but it's got so much. there. Yeah, so it's got so much history. Like, uh. it was unreal. I remember the match too. My dad said I could go over. He's like, "Yeah, just hit me with that cool moonsault you do, that springboard moonsault I still do to the, till this day." Uh -huh. And I remember doing it, and he caught me, and I just power slammed me, and he's like, "Kick out, kick out!" And I, I just couldn't kick out. I was so winded. <laughs> like I just, I just stayed down. <laughs> it was a boxing ring too. Like, <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. it's funny because like um, um, every time we go there, like like Taker, like Taker's one of his first matches, one of his first five matches was in that building. What? So yeah, so like it, that's got a lot of history, man. It's wow. unreal. Like so. Like, uh, he asked me every time, he's like, is it still the same? Even Finley and Regal, they know that building so well. And they're like, is it still the same? And I'm like, it's exactly the same. They haven't even painted it or anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So what's the scene like in, in South Africa for wrestling? Right now, it's trying to make a comeback. Um, not many people know this. In the 80s, 90s, it was like, it was an unofficial territory. Like when I was a kid, I saw Hogan job to our champion all the time. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but there was no YouTube back then or internet, right. so no one knew that. So there was no <laughs> side effect from yeah, right. exactly. Interesting. So like uh, as a kid, I saw Hogan and Andre in that same arena actually, and then um, yeah, in the eight late nineties, my dad died in ninety nine, and kind of oh, everyone. Th oh, it's okay, thank you. Um, everyone thought I was going to take over the company and run wrestling in South Africa and I was like no nah, I want to be a wrestler I want to get signed that was my first goal so I kind of just like packed a backpack and left like my family was mad at me for years mm. and the wrestling kind of like died down and then uh, a few guys started it up and they, they had a TV show for a while um, which I was on which I got a lot of footage and that I kept sending to the WWE and that's that's uh, that's how I got signed uh -huh. but they, they kind of lost that deal again and they got it again and like they're working on it right now so it's, it's looking good because there's so many like it's a good wrestlers out there, especially on the indies right now. You know, like so, guys like that can help build up territories like that. Yeah. You know, like let me ask you this: w Would you ever think about going back and, and continuing what your dad started? Good question. I, I think about that a lot, actually. I I think about that a lot, especially now that I see the state. 
South Africa is always like 10 years behind the rest of the world. So I'm thinking where what the US was like 10 years ago. So I, I feel like wrestling is, is making, I mean, wrestling is huge right now. Like uh, um, NXT has an awesome uh, slot on TV. Um, WWE Superstars is actually the biggest, the highest rated show in Africa. <laughs> really? Yeah. Interesting. A lot of the African countries, they don't speak English. You know? uh. So they don't understand those raw, like those 30 minute promo segments. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. see the matches, everyone understands matches. You right. Know? So that's like uh, NXT and the Superstars, those are the big shows in, in Africa. They're de definitely a big market, like TNA or GWF is on there right now. And like they, they're getting like New Japan stuff and hopefully Lucha soon. So like there's definitely a market for it. So it's a possibility. I, I actually, I, I made contact with uh, Adam Rose. I was like, well, we should just go open a wrestling school there. Because, I mean, I know kids want to train, but they don't know where to go. So uh, that's definitely a possibility in the next few years. Oh, very cool. Um, and so when did you realize that it sounds like pretty much from, from the get-go that you wanted this as a career? Yeah, yeah. I was eight years old. I remember oh, playing yeah. the first, the, the, remember the Raw game on Sega? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I played that, uh -huh. and I was like, I turned around to my friend. I was like, that's what I'm going to do one day. Like, I, I knew. <laughs> And I, I didn't I didn't quit. There was like a few times which I, I was like, yeah, there's no way I can make this. But I just I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna die trying. <laughs> die. And it just wasn't really possible from South Africa. So you, you where did you did you head to the UK or where did you go? UK. I went to to school. I, I lived in UK for five years because I figured that the, the wrestling scene there was like up and coming. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't. It only started like when I left. But ah. <laughs> <laughs> at least I got to meet some people and like I got to like train every day and do shows and stuff like that. Um, my mom, God bless her, I love her, but like she was the one actually. She told me when I was young, she's like, "There's no way you're gonna make it." Like it, she, and her reasoning was, she goes, "No South African has ever made it." And I was like, "Well, exactly." So I can be the first one, right? <laughs> you know, like you now, she, now she's the biggest wrestling fan in the world. Uh, like, okay, like, good. <laughs> nice. I mean, you were the first South African signed to WWE. Right? Yes, yes, real South African. Like uh, I know they had like some South African characters. Like, <laughs> right, right. <yeah. laughs> you kind of have to shoot be real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah Kofi Kingston turns out yeah. not. <laughs> people, not. people still ask me. They're like, "Are you ready from South Africa?" <laughs> like, it is confusing. I mean, they do because they make up stuff like Kofi Kingston so yeah, often. Yeah. You know, like, but that's true. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just listen to me speak. Like I don't sound American or Japanese. Or that's true. It's a hard accent to yeah. to fake. I feel as well. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing too. I'm sorry, Dale. That's the thing with your accent. I mean, it, it's not an English accent. It's not an Australian one. It, it's a South African accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, pretty the dialect. Much. Yeah, you, you can tell. So, what's some of your favorite spots to wrestle then? Uh, not company wise, but just globally speaking. Just like uh, like cities. Mm -hmm. oh, so many. I mean, uh, recently, just before the South African trip just before this happened, <laughs> I stopped in Dubai. Uh, and it actually looks like Dubai scene is actually up and coming. It yeah. It actually looks pretty cool. I know WWE started going there maybe a few years ago. Yeah, funny. Well. So I did I, I did a couple of skydives there on the, on the Palm. I don't know if you guys ever seen oh, online yeah. the Palm. So I jumped over the Palm and I just saw like, there was like fireworks and there was like a big concert going on. And as I landed, they were like, oh yeah, Justin Bieber's in town. But yeah. right next to that, the WWE was holding tryouts <laughs> the same day. <laughs> it was so random, but I didn't realize anyone was in town. And when I got to my hotel, I was like, oh, the boys are in town. So I started texting all the guys, you know, like uh, like Baldo, like the head trainer, and like Norman Smiley and guys like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah, but we like we have a flight tonight. It was so random. <laughs> yeah, they don't give them a lot of time. To yeah, but I mean, there's a lot of cities like that. Like, uh, I've been working on Brazil, like oh, a lot of South American countries, actually. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Portugal, like Spain, all those all those countries that you you never think. I saw a lot scene. of with the when the Hardys were wrestling um, the Young Bucks. There was a lot of that South American stuff. Yeah, they, they were just getting hot, hot crowds yep. down there. Yep. Chile, Chile is hot right now. Yeah. Um, Brazil, I think, will in the next five years or so be pretty big. Interesting. Um, yeah, South America is like what I have my eye on right now. Uh huh. Taking that salsa lessons and Spanish lessons right now. <laughs> I know. You can get some some help at, at Lucha, I'm sure. Maybe. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. How's your How's your run at, at Lucha Underground been? Oh, so fun! Like, I've been wrestling since I was 14, 15, mm -hmm. and this is the most fun I've ever had in wrestling. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's it's super fun. Like the the team is great. Everyone's so fun to hang around with. You know, like everyone like bounces ideas off each other. Like it's 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 really a fun place. Now is that the entire roster you feel, or I mean, you've got your your nice little little group going on with uh, Worldwide Underground, so yeah, that's that's been super fun. But like the whole roster, like everyone's nice and like everyone's super talented there. You know, like from the referees to the, even the, the backstage people, even like the people who's never like even like watched wrestling or seen wrestling, they become wrestling fans because mm. of the show, which is like that to me. That's so great. Yeah, I guess in a TV production, there's a lot of people who come just because they're 
part of production. Exactly. So they didn't have yeah, to yeah. know anything about wrestling. It was funny, like my first week there, the, this one guy comes up to me, he's like, wow, you guys did all those stunts in one take. Because <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. in Hollywood, we do like hundreds and hundreds of right. takes. On, <laughs> Yeah, like to me, that was like so cool. Like I was like, yeah, I do this every day. <laughs> That's kind of my life, but thank you. Yeah. It is amazing. Thank you for noticing. Um, now, had you crossed paths with, with Johnny in WWE? Um, hmm, not in a singles match. Like possibly like some eight man tags or okay. maybe like Royal Rumble. But you were there at the same time for a part of it? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Like maybe a year, year and a half ish. Okay, cool. Yeah, he seems like a, a fun guy to. Oh, he's awesome, with. and he's doing some great work right now. I think I feel like he's doing the best work of his life. He's he's amazing. He's like he just keeps growing. I feel he like keeps growing. Like he learns new stuff every week. Mm -hmm. he's like he's in great shape. He looks like he's twenty one. Like, Getting in <laughs> movies and doing right? all kinds movies, of things. Movies, doing his own thing, and you know, and he's a good person. Like people usually people like that become kind of like dicks, but he's, right. he's, he's, you know, he's a good human. <laughs> I know we play the bad guys on TV, but right. like, we're actually nice guys. You, you wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he ended up being one, but that's cool. That <laughs> yeah, <not>. right. <laughs> I mean, you've been in lots of factions, I guess, for, for a lot of your career. Do you, do you like that kind of group mentality to have like guys that you're working with constantly, or do you like solo better? I do, I do. I like both. Uh, the group thing is cool because you can like bounce ideas off each other, and mm. you, can, you can, like, in the ring, you can feed off people. Uh, like, perfect example right now, like, me tagging with Jack Evans, uh -huh. it's so much fun. Like I watch this kid in the ring and I stand on the apron and I was like, like, does anyone see this guy? Like he, to me, he's like one of the best right now. <laughs> Just like character wise, I mean, we all know he can do any move on the planet. Yes, it but seems like, like it. Character wise, like he's evolved so much. And like, uh, that's cool to me because it makes me want to up my game. You know, I'm standing on the apron, I'm thinking of stuff I want to do. So I, I feed off him and like, you know, like I, I feel like the fans can tell that too. Like. Uh, my last year in WWE, like all the house shows I'll be doing, it's just kind of like going through the motions because every weekend is exactly the same. And I feel like fans, they can't pinpoint it exactly, but they know they're like, oh, something, something was off in that match, you know, something was weird. So like, uh, yeah, definitely working with guys so so I can get, I feel like I get better when I work with other guys. You can always evolve in wrestling. That's what's cool. Like before Eddie Carrero died, he, he told me that he, he, every day he learned something new. And to yeah, me, he was, so he, true. he was one of the best for sure by far like, oh, yeah. when it comes to like in-ring stuff and the whole package really and yeah, like yeah. to hear him say that I was like yeah that's so true you, you <coughs> do learn even if you wrestle someone terrible or even if you wrestle someone good you always learn something new so you're you're in FCW for a little while and then things kind of popped off with the Nexus what uh, did you expect because that, that was, Nexus was hot yeah I mean did, what, what, did, what did you guys think going into it like did you even have a relationship with those guys I mean I know they're all down there but oh yeah like I mean I was in FCW with those guys those guys are just like legit my best friends in the, in the business oh great right that's now, great and I still keep in contact with all of them um, we didn't know how big it was going to be we had no idea you know like usually in wrestling everything has already been done before or, or just a variation and I feel like Nexus was kind of fresh and new at the time, so like uh, we, we didn't know what to expect. We didn't know how to do it. We didn't know how to handle it. We're like, so what do you guys really want from us? Like, I, we just like, yeah, we just kind of like took the ball and ran with it, and we all know what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, I mean, there's there's so many good Nexus memories for me, and I feel like, and in, in, in different iterations of it, even as well. Um, when when they switched it to like CM Punk being a part of it, I mean, did that change the way that you guys worked together, or was that still a little bit? Yeah, like we didn't we didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, it was a very pivotal point in the company backstage at that time. I mm. won't go too much in depth uh -huh. of that, but uh, <laughs> so we, we really didn't know what was going to happen. We were just like still having trying to have fun and trying to you know like get the get the faction over. I mean, it, it was. It lasted. It didn't even last a whole year. Now that I think about it, like it's. We didn't even get a WrestleMania moment. Was it not? No. We didn't. No. No. Because no. we didn't even make it to Mania. Oh yeah, because yeah, it was a SummerSlam. Yeah, the SummerSlam thing. Yeah, yeah, in SummerSlam. Speaking of SummerSlam, I know that Jericho and Edge have been on record talking about you know pushing for you guys to go over. Yeah. And apparently something got changed and everything. And I know there's been a lot of hearsay and stuff that has been said from people who weren't there. Yeah. What was your perspective on that? Um, so we, we knew, we knew we had to go over and we obviously we wanted to, but we didn't know how to like being rookies. We didn't know how to express that at the time. Like we didn't want to come off as like arrogant and like, you know, like, you know, like how guys are when they get a push, when they're new in the industry, we didn't want to come off like that. And obviously we lost the battle and the person who got it reversed, he, Edge and Christian actually told him that day and the next day, like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. He actually apologized. It was one of the few times that I heard him apologize. He's like, yeah, you guys were right. We should have done it that way. But it was too late. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Well, at least he realized it and yeah. signified it to you. That's at least something. Exactly, that's nice. exactly. 
in this industry, I feel like there's not a lot of that even. No, <laughs> absolutely right. Um, so let's talk about the core then. Um, after <laughs> that, did get a mania moment. Yeah, but it was very very short. Yeah. What uh, for me? So just for me as a fan. I was very mad at that <laughs> match. I mean, what did what did you guys think of, of the way that, I mean, it's like, A, you're on the card, I guess, right? But Yeah, so the, the problem is with live TV, Marty can tell you the stuff, like um, the segments run long, especially promo segments, mm. and like a lot of things happen, so time get cut, and that, that happens with Raw all the time. That's why like the, the match quality is so much worse on Raw than any other show, well, SmackDown now too, actually. But like when, when, when um, segments go long or stuff change, like you, sometimes you get added a minute, Sometimes you get taken away a minute. So that match, I think initially we had like 15 or 20 minutes, and then it was like 12, and then it was 11, 10, 9, and then eventually it was 1. So in a way, it was cool because like I didn't have to stress out about anything. I was like, okay, I don't have to remember any spots. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. I'm just going to like walk out. with uh, We were still tag champs, me and Heath at the time, and it was the first time my mom came to a, a, see me walk wrestle live. Oh my gosh, so, wow. That was kind of cool, so I was just like focusing on the entrance really. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, stuff like that happens, yes. yeah, it, it, it kind of like sucks, but yeah, that's 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 the business, unfortunately. So that was a day of kind of thing? Oh, that was like five minutes before. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Up in Gorilla where they're Up changing your time? Yep, yep, yeah. yep. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, we kind of knew it was going to happen, so like, we didn't even like rehearse anything or like, we, we, you probably figured like it was gonna happen to our match. If you look at the card, normally you can tell like this is gonna happen. To <laughs> yeah. this when it goes down, yeah. who's it going yeah. down on? Yeah, I see. Uh, and so you said you keep up with with the guys. Um, how's how's Stu Bennett doing? Is he he's great. He's actually he just flew to LA. He's here today. Oh nice. He's cool. staying in Burbank. Oh. Yeah, because I, I I text him and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna. Um, yeah, a bunch of the boys are obviously here because uh, the hurricane in in, uh, in Florida. Right. So a bunch of the guys are here because I think the I think Rose here on Monday in Anaheim. Yeah, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow. A, so a bunch of the guys are in town and like yeah, I speak to them quite often. So. He's cool. He's another guy that I felt like that. I mean, I'm hoping that he kind of comes back. To I, I think he will. I think he will. Yeah. Uh, you know, like he, he every time I ask him, it's like, hey, let's do this, and he's like, no, nah, I'm not ready yet. Okay. But, but like the way he says it, I, it's gonna happen. I think. Excellent. I like that news. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you would you have guessed that Heath Slater would be the longest standing last man standing <laughs> of the uh, Nexus? Yes and no. He's like he's like one of those guys that uh, um, he'll be around forever. I mean, okay. you can put him in a match against anybody; he'll have a good match. You can put him in Absolutely. any promo segment. You can be entertaining. He can be funny. He can be aggressive. He can you can you can do it all. Um, he's probably got the best deal out of all of us right now because like you know like the, the guys backstage they like they like guys like that. You can plug him into any storyline into any segment. Yeah, and he'll do good. So. In a way, I, no. Like I, I know, and he's he's a hard worker and a, a loyal guy and trustworthy, and like you know, he does his job. He never complains. So like, I, I feel like, in a way, WWE rewards guys like that. Interesting. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Like, if you watch guys like JBL, who's been there like for centuries, <laughs> 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 like WWE eventually like gives you a little bit something. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, it's funny because I remember Heath when he came in down to Deep South. I mean, he was greener than green, and, you know, yep. he had some experience, but he went down there, and, uh, you know, he really, you know, stepped up his game. Oh, yeah. Same thing with Kofi and those guys when they went down there. Yep. And he's just a good country boy, you know? He like, is. He just loves wrestling, and he just loves to have a good time, and the, the character you see on TV, that's pretty much him. <laughs> <laughs> Very loose. Yep, yep. Um, so, uh, what's the future hold for you, then? I mean, we've got to get through this injury. Uh, what, what's your recovery time looking like? Uh, so it's been 14 weeks. I just started walking this week without crutches. Oh so that's just like this is like a big step. Like I was super depressed the last 14 weeks. I was like, oh man, this is never gonna happen. At least now that I can walk. I mean, I still have a long way to go, but at least I'm like, okay, I can see the finish line. So I just gotta keep doing my rehab and stuff. I mean, my my goal was to be in the best shape of my life this year. Uh, for some reason, I, I planned this like years ago. I don't know. I said to myself, when I, when I turn 37, <laughs> you know, I look at guys like Chris Jericho, who like, you know, he's way older, but he looks, oh, yeah. he looks fantastic. He's doing great work right now, and uh, it's, I mean, I, I'm gonna do it as long as my body will allow me to do it. You know, like, I'm not gonna push through any aches or pains if I if something happens to my leg again. You know, but like, um, only time will tell. You know, like I wanna. I want to have one more big run. That's that's what I want. And I mean, right now in Lucha too, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but like, the potential is there for for the show to to blow up. To, you yeah. Know? And uh, I want to I want to make an impact there for sure. And I just want to do as many shows around the world as possible. There's so much talent out there, like on the independents, like all these young kids that are wrestling. I want to teach them what I've learned, and you know, just just help them out and, and just work as many people as I can. 
Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a great goal. I think especially if, if South Africa could be a place that you know. And so how often are you going back there then? Not often enough. Like uh, when, when this happened, I did that tour there. And uh, maybe last year, I think I did a tour there. But other than that, it's like WWE only toured there every two or three years. Right. Yeah, so I went there twice with WWE. And, uh, I, I really love that package that they did when you, I guess you were kind of doing a singles run and they had, a, it was like you in South Africa yeah, yeah, and all that was such yeah. a cool video package. Yeah, I just actually just uploaded it on, onto my YouTube channel too. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. I, I found that. It was, a, it was a good skit. That was like, yeah, I think Core, I think Core was just about to, to be done. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember so the exact I wasn't time. even like, a, I, I didn't even have singles music yet. It was, so, <laughs> it was so weird too, because like I came out and I was like, yeah, in my hometown, I was like, oh, listen, listen to this pop. And no one knew the music, so everyone's like, huh? And obviously when I came out, then they're like, oh, yay, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but two years later, we went back to that same, um, so my hometown, I think we sold out the venue like within like an hour, so that we had two shows back to back. Wow. And that was cool. That was like, that was like probably the best experience of my life. That was my mania. Like, you know, I got to the back and all the agents were like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that, was a good, that was a good feeling. So let me ask you, did they put you over in your hometown? Hmm. I, think, I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think it started out... I can't even remember the matches I had. I think I had like two matches too, because you know, like something that starts out as a tag and then it breaks up, or something that starts out as a single match and two heels run in and it was a tag. So yeah, I got, I got some exposure there for sure. Oh, actually, the one time it was a, it was like an eight man tag. It was like me, Christian, Big Show, Randy, and um, oh, I remember this. So there's like fifteen thousand people. One of the biggest stadiums in South Africa. Uh, it's called the Dome, and the whole crowd started going P J Black. PJ Black, because I was PJ Black on the Indies for, for years, right. since I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So people there know me as PJ Black, and Randy goes, like, who are they yelling for? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so like on the apron, I had to like catch him up. Like, <laughs> South African history right here, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a big deal, you know. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you said that was Randy that asked that? Yeah. That yeah. sounds like a Randy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. It really does. <laughs> Uh, did you have to adjust your style much for, for Lucha Underground, or is it pretty much you came in as you were? Um, I, I had to adjust a little bit because I had to go back and do all the stuff that, that they took away from me in WWE. Uh, oh, so right. I kinda like, yeah, but I, I, I feel like I, there's so many good guys. Like, everyone's a high flyer these days. So, like, I'm, right. I, I, I'm constantly evolving and changing up my style. I'm trying to, right now, I'm trying to be like a fit finney, like a brawler, more submission style wrestling. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing my, my 450 and all the high flying stuff, but I'm going to be more selective by doing that. You know, so when I do do it, people are like, oh shit, you still got it. I was actually at a show before I got injured, and this little kid runs up to me and he's like, Hey man, you still got it. I'm like, I never lost it, but thanks. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, speaking of matches, is, is there anybody on your bucket list that you haven't worked that you want to work? Yes, Okada for sure. Oh. Yeah, wow. and and I mean, I know he's been doing great, and he's like number one in the PW 500. But this yep. was this goes back way way before that. Like I've I've been wanting to wrestle him for years. Like way before even like he broke out in, in New Japan. Hmm. I mean he had that stint in, in TNA that was terrible and then he kinda like went back to Japan and that's right. when the like in, in that era when he moved back I was like, yeah, I wanna really work this guy. Who knows? It can still happen. Did you wrestle much in Japan? Uh just with the WWE. Okay. Yeah, just the WWE tours, so And what was the the, the GFW stint? Uh, it was very brief for you what, what was your experience like over there uh, I mean I liked it Jeff was cool I mean he he loved my ideas he uh -huh. let me be me nice. um, I mean on the show I cut a lot of promos because like uh, th that never used to be my strong point but like I, I love doing them I love doing them and then he let me cut a promo on every show which made me better and it was great I, and he let he uh, he was like you're gonna be my top heel kid like he, he saw me be a heel one day against the Bullet Club and he's like, you should never be a baby face ever again. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, so he just believed in me. So it was kind of cool. I, I enjoyed it, you know. But like when Lucha came around, he didn't, I didn't have a deal with Jeff. Uh, and I was a champion at the time, but uh, he, he didn't, he couldn't like sign me to a contract. Yeah, so they weren't like, doing a lot of deals with anybody. Really, yeah, right? yeah. And I, I mean, if, 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 the, if Global Force maybe had a TV deal or something in the works, then I probably would have stayed. But like I knew something wasn't going to happen in the next year or so. So I was like, let me, let me go do this Lucha thing. That Lucha actually called me for the first season, by the way, and that, that was just when I left WWE. And uh, I remember they, they called me on the 10th of, it was the 10th of October or something. And uh, I, I was just finished. I was like, yeah, I'm not signing with anybody, like ROH or TNA. I'm not signing with anybody. I'm just doing my own thing for a while. Uh, I, and I've never heard of Lucha Underground at the time, too. Right. And then obviously when the first season started airing, I was like, oh, how did I say no to this? <laughs> <laughs> and then apparently I said to him on the phone, I was like, call me, call me in a year, maybe we can talk. He called me. On the day, call me the 10th of October, a year later, and then I think I started on the 14th. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. 
that's very rare. I feel for people to be on that. Like, <laughs> right. He said his Apple alert. Right. PJ Black. Yeah. Got it. I'm on negotiating power. <laughs> and when you say the WWE uh, didn't uh, took some things away from you, now it's when they do that kind of thing. Is that for safety because you're on the road a lot, or what? What is generally the motivation for it's, that? It's it's different reasons for different people. I they, see. they didn't so much like take it away from me and go, hey, don't do that. It was more like. This is the time you're given. This is the story we need to tell, and you're the first match on the card. So I'm not, I'm not gonna do like an outside dive shooting star press in the first match because like look, obviously matches has to tell stories, but on a WWE card, the whole card has to tell a story. Right. You want to blow them up too early. Exactly. So I didn't want to be that guy because in developmental, a bunch of guys got fired for doing that. Oh, actually. I see. So I just, <laughs> you know I wanted my job at the time. So I was like, I, I figured like once I get to a certain point, like doing like main event matches and stuff like that, then I can be me again. Mm. But it just it just never got to that. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to ask the doctor like, can I do a four fifty once this heals up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I'm definitely gonna do it. <laughs> no matter what they say. I've been, I've been doing that move since I was like six years old. So Did like, you're the kid, he still has it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A kid telling a kid, that's tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that move, though. Man, it is a thing of beauty. Thank so you, thank cool you. to see. Um, all right, well, great. Is there anything that we can put over for you? Or what, what are you in the interim, besides Lucha Underground? What, what, else, uh, what else are you working on? Anything we can help with? Um, just working on that YouTube channel right now. Okay, YouTube.com slash PJBlack450. Okay. Um, I'm working on some stop-motion animations, and I, I've uploaded a bunch of my base jumping stuff. Uh, there's a ton of stuff on there. So, and I'm, I'm pretty active on social media because I just sit at home a lot these days. So like, yeah, everything's on my website too. If you want any of my social media or my email links and stuff, it's on pjblack.com. All right, awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming in today. This has been super great. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I've had a great time, fun. seriously. It was <laughs> fun, dude. Marty, you want to put yourself over? Yeah, I'm uh, Twitter uh, at Marty Elias1967, uh, Instagram at Marty Elias67, and on Facebook, good old Marty Elias. Nice. Go. I keep thinking this is vodka, by the way. I'm like, <laughs> very disappointed. Very, uh, we do not have, I have Diet Coke, if that helps you. Any. It's probably got as many chemicals yeah, as vodka. Just not yeah, as fun. Right. Kia? Ah, Kia Stevens, Twitter, Mean Queen K, Instagram, Spinning Fist. And I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can follow us at Facebook.com slash Ringside Pop or Instagram Ringside Pop. And thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Dale Rutledge, and Stephen Lemieux, managing producer for AfterBuzz Wrestling, Mark Donica, and the entire Ringside Pop staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook, rate and comment on iTunes and YouTube. Follow the show on Twitter at Ringside Pop. This has been a presentation of the AfterBuzz TV Network. Buzz you later!